<laughs> Hello people, I'm the anime hero. I review anime so you can enjoy it, and here's my friend. Mr. Falcon Punch and 996. Yeah. This time we're gonna celebrate my uh sixth anniversary on YouTube. Yay, kid. Oh actually you know, speaking of people noticing me, did did you catch what I what I sent to Pan? <laughs> KKO Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dude, that's a legitimate question. I was actually wondering, was I really seriously supposed to be him? <laughs> and then, like, so he retweets it. Everyone's, like, you know, insulting him. <laughs> like, you should. Uh -huh. <laughs> like, no, that's not Pan. He's too normal. He looks like a decent person. <laughs> and then he even posted on his Tumblr, actually. Which surprised oh. me. So yeah, he, uh, he actually commented saying, um, wondering if that was his brother. <laughs> oh. So like, I, I, I don't know, I was kind of hoping like I get mentioned the podcast, but I don't know, I haven't listened to it yet. Yeah, same here, didn't have time last night. <laughs> I don't know, I was kind of expecting him to maybe in a review of OKKO to be like pissed off like that one time with the, um, with the Loud House with the whole goth girl thing. <laughs> oh. You know, I'm kind of hoping something like that, <laughs> but oh well. Yeah, but, um, yeah, thanks, Falcon, for the clap, man. I, actually, when is your anniversary? Because I have no idea. So I don't even know you, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Actually, yeah, it's something I should probably just quickly look up. Because, like, I want to say we you did been doing videos, like, slightly longer than I have. Because I know you already had a channel by the time uh, I started up mine. Mm -hmm. So maybe mm -hmm. we're just, like, a year or two apart. I want to say, because before I was just like watching videos on the anime community, and then I eventually got pissed off enough that everyone was just talking about the same three things, that I'm like, let me make my own uh, channel and talk about something different. Yeah, well, people are still doing that today, you know, they keep talking about the same stuff, like, like, so I find it funny as hell that no one knows how to spell whoa anymore, because of oh. all the uh, crash hype. Yeah, I'm like, it'll crash. Oh, okay, I started in 2012, holy fuck. Mm. Yeah, so it's like five years then. Yeah, man. That's, oof, five years of this. Mm -hmm. It's hard to like, put in perspective. Yeah, we just gotta keep doing it because we feel like it. Oh. Oh yeah, so anyways, what we're gonna do tonight is have a Q&A session. It's not live, <laughs> but it's good enough, I guess. Yeah, so a couple of weeks ago, I asked you guys to post some questions, and originally we were gonna answer it in last week, but Falcon had to attend a wedding, so we're barely doing it now. Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, oh, it's no problem, because they actually gave me a break from, like, you know, let's not do a podcast, because I'm, the, the, most of my uploads have been nothing but podcasts recently. Which, oh. you, know, you know, it's been like hit or miss, so I don't know. We'll see what, what, how it goes. But anyways, um, so yeah, we, we got questions for both you and me. So we'll flip-flop taking turns. Right. Um, I, I guess we'll start from the top. Because, um, I don't know, on the very top of my end, I'm, I'm getting boobop. I don't know if you got that on your uh, end. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so we're probably synced. Yeah, let's not waste any time. So, Boobob1987 asks, I only got one question. Any thoughts about the new sequel for Basilisk? Uh, so, recent news, there was a confirmation that Basilisk will have a second series, which seems to imply a descendants of the same family, or... Which kind of is a question, because I'm wondering, but were there any survivors? Or is this implying that Oboro and... and um, fuck, I'm forgetting the... Sanosuke? Samanosuke? Wow, I don't remember what the, the male character's name was, but I think it was someone else. Okay. Well, the point is, uh, it, it seems to imply they might have survived, or who knows, maybe we'll see Tenzin. But I recall that this was based on a novel, not on, like on a manga. But I'm still curious, like how they could pull it off. Like how can we continue the story from there, since it's supposed to be a Romeo and Juliet version with ninjas, which is pretty fucked up <laughs> in a couple of scenes. Yeah. But I don't, I'm hoping for Tenzin to come back, because, you know, since he was immortal and everything, that would be a good excuse, or unless we can get a new villain that's just as bad, that's just as terrifying. <laughs> so, yeah, moving on. Well, there's a reply to her question, it's not about Merlin the Mighty, but I know he asks a question a little later. Uh, yeah. yeah, I see that. 
Well, actually, let me get the two Twitter questions out of the way first, right off the bat, because this could apply to both of us, I guess. Like, right. do anime studios usually influence your opinion at the moment to watch a series? For example, X Studios make it so fuck it, or opposite case by Banegas Gonzalo. Um, in a sense, for me, depending on the studio, like if it's one that I really like. Uh, I might be swayed more to watch their series, like give it a chance over something if it was a studio I'm not that familiar with, if I don't care that much about. Like, for example, like when Trigger comes out with something new, most likely I'm going to be watching it. Mm-hmm. Or Science Saru, since they're new. Like, most of the newer studios, I'll give more of a... Uh, I get more hype for it, because like, some of the newer studios have been producing a lot of great stuff. Yeah, for me, it's, uh, I, I don't know, there's not really any studio that I'm just like, well, I, I guess it's the ones that, um, what's it called, Key or something? The one that does the whole Fate Stay Night thing, because I'm never really interested in their stuff, so. Oh, UFO Table? Yeah, or... yeah, yeah, UFO Table or that other company. I don't know, I just never really liked their their style for some reason. That's just it. I know, it looks really nice, but there's something about it. Yeah, it's, it's can... very flat. It's uh, in some areas, and then, um... Well, I don't know, the only real show I seen was Fate Zero in the first one, but it, it never really got me super interested. Or uh... Yeah, I know, I started watching Fate Zero a while back, and uh, I could kind of see what the hype is about, but it's not really that appealing for me, because I'm not really into that kind of, like, fantasy stuff. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know, for me, I just didn't get really into the characters or, or much yeah, of Yeah, that too. Uh, I need something a little more, you know, <laughs> a little more, uh, <laughs> what is it, eh, weebish or something. <laughs> well, I, I don't know, they're, 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 I'm only watched like a few episodes, I mean, there's some weebish stuff in there, I mean, you got like, your waifus and shit. Yeah, you know, I know, but I mean like something more, up. something people will consider like, oh yeah, that's not like, that's not a good anime, I find it more entertaining. <laughs> I don't know, something like Kill a Kill. <laughs> well, yeah, but Kill a Kill is good. Once, once you really analyze it, Kill a Kill is way deeper, you know? You got those, yeah. all that symbolism and shit. Yeah, yeah I, I, I don't know why I like it more when the show is that, like, it, it's a type of show where you have to, like, look deeper into it yourself and, you know, you find stuff to it rather than the show that claims to be, like, uh, I, I don't know, usually what I don't like is whatever the anime community tends to like because... It usually just gets like, um, well, overhype is a very simple term. I was trying to think of something more, uh, <laughs> a different adjective to explain this. You see, like, I, I want to say usually the hype kills it for me, but there's times where I could ride the hype train too. Obviously, you know, there's things like JoJo, Hero Academia, yeah, but Kill uh, Kill. I feel some things get things. out of hand sometimes by the anime community, like the... Fate Zero is the one example, or Tokyo Ghoul is the other one where everyone was like really getting into that, but I'm like, mmm. Yeah, trust what, me, yeah. I know, as the president of an anime club, you know, most of my members will hype something up and they, they try talking to me about it, because, you know, I'm the president, so I'm expected to have this, like, level of knowledge. And I do technically, but when it comes to this hype stuff, and then I start feeling bad, then I start feeling like this. Mm-hmm. Like, oh yeah, Attack on Titan, Tokyo Ghoul, uh, Re-Zero, the Fate Zero, all this stuff. I'm like, yeah. it's really, it's, didn't really appeal to me. And like, I, I've tried Attack on Titan, I've tried getting into it like three fucking times. Every time, I'm like, I just can't. Like, I get why there's an appeal. Like, I, like all these shows, I get the appeal, but it just like, doesn't appeal to me. Mm-hmm. For some reason, and it kind of bothers me because I feel like there's something wrong with me. Because everyone's telling me it's good, but I don't know. It's one of those cases where I, I don't know if people have done like exploration on their own and rather just um, going with the flow sometimes. Because um, when I first got into anime, I was just exploring stuff on my own because I didn't really know about YouTube or its anime community, so. I didn't necessarily know what show was like, oh yeah, that show's like in this season, or oh, that show was bad this season. I was just, just doing whatever, my own thing, and then once I started doing more YouTube videos, that's when I was more aware of how a community acts towards certain shows. But for the most right. part, it's just been like, mm, 
I don't know. I just keep an eye on what's going on because uh, 2016 was like the one year where I was really diving into a bunch of new anime, but it hasn't been like that ever since so far. I mean, for me personally, in the recent years, I've been checking out a lot more of the recent upcoming stuff. Like, I've been pretty good about it. Like, every season, I at least pick up. Like, I'll start off the season, I'll be watching like 15 to 20 different things, but like, towards the end, it'll probably be like 10 to 7. Mm-hmm. But, you know, still, that's a fair amount. Yeah, it's really, I think just people need to explore a little bit more and not just follow whatever's popular. Um, but, you know, that's. We both already know that. Yeah. <laughs> it's something we say all the time. Yeah, anyway, so back to the concept of anime studios. I guess it's just kind of like. Because I know Toei Animation is one word that gets kind of like some hate, but, you know, Toei's big enough. They can do whatever the fuck they want. <laughs> And, yeah, that's, that's the thing. They're big and they have licenses to, like, everything. Mm-hmm. So there's always going to be some kind of interest. Like, there might be a little bit worry behind it, but there is interest. Yeah. So I guess it's the best way to put it. It's more of a case-by-case scenario, I think. I don't necessarily just neglect any studio. It's more like if, if the anime intrigues me, then I'll watch it. If not, then I'll just leave it at that. But, yeah, the, the last Twitter question here is from Ryu, or Ryu the Token... Do you like FKMT's works? Which one's your favorite? And by that, I'm assuming he means um, Nobuyuki Fukumoto for his uh, gambling series, you know, stuff like Kaiji Akagi and the, um, fuck, what was the name of that other one? The one about that uh, elderly man? Oh, yeah, the strongest man, Kurosawa. Yeah, there we go. Because so far, the only, yeah. one I, the only one I explored was Kaiji, and I feel like that was, like, sort of, like, enough for me <laughs> already. I know there's that other one, which I'm not sure if it's related to Kaiji, but it's called Akagi. Yeah, it's... I know also that anime. Yeah, that one is just, just similar, I guess, in idea, but with Mahjong, but... I don't know, I think Kaiji is definitely the more stronger one of those two, but then again, there's Kurosawa, which might be the best one of the three. Yeah, because, I mean, that one's not dealing with gambling. Uh, it does kind of get messed up, it does get a sequel, like, it starts off in an interesting way, but then, like, kind of evolves and it's just like the way the original ended was so good like why did he have to make another one like it kind of tarnishes the original's ending which was really hard hitting mm-hmm. um, for such an outrageous series but uh, from the guy's work I've only checked out uh, Kurosawa and then I'm starting Kaiji I've seen like six seven episodes so far yeah to me, to me that thing was like super addicting after a while Definitely does have the, uh, definitely unique anime. Yeah, one of the most, like, tragic crime stories ever. But, yeah. Yeah, I I guess that will do. Um, now we're going back to the YouTube, and everything else will be just YouTube. Uh, for this one, Christopher Mallows has, like, three questions, so I guess we'll try to figure out which one do we want to talk about. (laughs) Let's see, there's number one, which Gonagai manga do you think should get an anime? Two, do you plan on reviewing anime by for your superhero anime reviews? Will you review any of the Tokusatsu Tatsunoko reboots? Uh, I guess the, I could answer number three for you easily. Tatsunoko reboots? Yes. Do you plan on reviewing Get a Robo? I don't know, maybe. And I guess we'll just answer the number one <laughs> together. Okay. Yeah. Which Gonagai manga do you think should get anime? All of them. <laughs> Constantly. On wow. A Wait, so you want to see uh, Omoraikun, the anime? <laughs> Dude, honestly, I would love that shit. If, if, you get the same studio, if you get the same studio that did the Mera Mera anime that basically oh. improved upon the manga, mm-hmm. I'm good. I'm set. Oh, God. Get ready for some real shit quality anime. <laughs> still waiting for like the well 2018 we're supposed to get that Astro Boy reboot which I hope does happen doesn't just become lost (laughs) 
becomes lost, you can always talk about it in that uh, one segment of yours. I guess, because I, I mean, I'm really hoping Cobra Return of Joe Gillian also comes out, because I don't want it just to be, hey, there was this trailer, and there was this image, and then they never did anything with it. And like, uh, yeah, I know. Cobra, it's like they release news. I'm like, oh, I'm all hyped. But it's like, when is it going to happen, though? Uh, like, there's like that whole live action movie that's like probably never going to happen. Yeah, it's just been <laughs> development hell just because he can't find a Cobra actor and then he got intimidated by Guardians of the Galaxy and the new Star Wars. So I was like, all this shit's going down. Why you haven't been filming it? <laughs> but see, I don't know why like the whole Guardians of the Galaxy and the Star Wars Star Trek thing should be a bother. I mean, sure, yeah, that's competition, but like, Cobra, I think, could stand uh, its own feet. Yeah, I mean, yeah, like, like none of them have a psycho push. gun on their fucking arm. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, like, and none of them have a character that's as cool as Cobra. Like, if you do Cobra justice to his anime manga counterpart, you're gold. Yeah. You're gold. Yeah, man, I mean, you still got the French fan base, you know, they'll eat it up. Or maybe yeah. he, or maybe he's intimidated by the fact of the success of the other live-action movies. Maybe. I guess, but I think if, like, the director could play his cards properly, he shouldn't have anything to yeah. worry about. Get someone... <laughs> Or make someone <laughs> make someone in the lab to become the perfect Cobra. <laughs> Either that, or like get some guy and brainwash him and then make him think he's the real Cobra. <laughs> or maybe find that guy that supposedly is like that inspired Cobra's design and like reverse age him <laughs> to make him younger. <laughs> yeah, make him younger so he can be perfect. Yeah, he's the ultimate Cobra. <laughs> Either that or I'll be surprised if they quit the live action and just make... You know what? Let's just make it to an anime movie. <laughs> let's move forward. Yeah, uh, it's just like an, an actual anime or maybe even like a CG movie. Like, fuck it, whatever. Yeah, I guess they go the CG route with the the way Captain Harlock was. Yeah, I mean, like, I know the, the author, he was a fan of, like, 3D stuff. Like, I think he used some of it in his own works. Mm-hmm. Or, no, that was digital coloring. No, no, never mind. Yeah, so anyways, but, uh, like, yeah, anyways, yeah, it's like a next track. question, uh, <laughs> or do you have yeah. more? Or, okay, let's move on from Average Hero 1, who has a picture of Pun Pun. Yeah, questions for both Hero and Falcon. Is there an anime that you read and or watch that you use to help take a break from manly anime? Like the idea of taking a breather from all the insane mandom. That you consume by reading something that's more relaxing, like please ask me Gal Kochan or Dagashi Kashi. Dagashi Kashi. But Yeah, I've actually watched both of those series. But uh, yeah. Well I haven't. <laughs> but yeah, well, yeah, well, I well, well, well lately I I've been like in this like manly burnout, I guess that's the best way to put it, because I just been burned like burned out. I haven't really invested in much uh, masculine things in a while, but it's sort of there. But at the same time, it's not. Like I think it's because I'm focusing more on the more manly stuff now, so maybe that's the reason. And I, I, I ever since I did the manly list, I, I did feel burned out because I felt that I covered pretty much the the main essentials of the of the manly side of things, or at least like a good chunk of it. Yeah, I was gonna say. I think like in your case, you practically checked out everything there is. There's still <laughs> there's still some that I haven't yeah. explored, but I you know I just haven't really felt motivated to just go all the way through. Because with JoJo, I also felt burned out too. That's why like I haven't done Steel Ball Run review, which I'm pretty sure that's a question that's gonna get asked later. But yeah, that's one reason. I just felt like I don't know exploring different things because uh. Uh, last year around Halloween, that's when I was going into that horror phase, and this year I was going to the superhero phase. Or well, then again, there was like that one year of Lupin for me, where I was watching everything, <laughs> waiting for Blue yeah, to come no, out. Like, and... <laughs> like speaking to you, like from all these years, like I know you have like these phases, like you know you had that Baki phase and that Kenny yeah. Command phase. Oh yeah, Kenny Command like, phase. You reflects in your videos too. Cause yeah, yeah, because that's what I. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, right now I'm going through the Sly Cooper phase, which is actually starting to burn out, <laughs> because... Um... Well, yeah, I mean, there isn't that much, you know, it's not like Sonic, <laughs> where there's like, like a thousand fucking games, like Sly, it's like, you only have these four. That's yeah, like... that's it, which makes it a little easier to, uh, to explore, I guess, or, you know, find stuff about it, but then at the same time, it's like, mm, I really wish there was a Sly 5, or that movie, or a TV show, but I don't know... I don't I know because the TV show supposedly on its way. But, yeah, because yeah. uh, uh, the the only Sly Cooper video that I could do would be a comparison with him and Lupin the Third, and I would have to like borrow footage from YouTubers in order to make that video. 
Cause, um, yeah, see, I've always wanted to do gaming videos. That's the problem, bro. Yeah, because I, I would like to do, like, a Let's Play of Sly Cooper because there's some stuff that I explored that I, I don't know if other people have done it. Maybe some, like, uh, speedrunners, maybe. Because, uh, like, there, in Sly 2, there's this one mission where you got to get in the barrel and then, you know, use the dynamite on top of the plane. All right. I yeah, found a shortcut sense. in order to um, reduce the time for, like, having to do that. Okay, so the problem with, with that stage is that to get the second one, you have to go all the way around. I mean, you have to make a double trip. To get the second one and then go back down to get to, and all the way back up to get to the third one, but there's actually a, a shortcut between one and two. For the first, for to get the second one, after you start walking up the, you know, ne when you're next to the fan, what you could actually do is get all the way to the front of the stage and just um, walk off the platform, and then you'll just land to the ground without exploding or anything. So you just just don't walk off. You get to the second one pretty easily. Then all you gotta do is make the third trip. <laughs> And oh. and, the, and you know go into the pro, around the propeller make the bomb explode and the reason I know that is because I had to do the mission twice <laughs> because <laughs> the game fucking crashed. <laughs> yeah, I, I hate when that happens and they have to re like it happens rarely, but when it does, it's like one of the most infuriating things out there. <laughs> yeah, because it, it, the game crashed on me. Slide two and slide three crash with me. I don't know why, because I know in the when I was watching Super Gaming Brothers. The, um, like, their slide 2 um, playthrough, like, it crashed at one point as Sly lost his head. It just vanished and the game's fucking froze. In my okay. case, like, when I finished that bomb mission, the thing exploded and the cutscene got stuck there. Like, it just wouldn't go beyond that. And same thing happened in slide 3 when I was in the pirate ship. Like, at some point, it would just be stuck in a cutscene and it wouldn't go beyond that. So I was like, ah, oh, fuck. And... Yeah, in my case, it's like it'll just freeze. That's yeah. what usually happens. Like, Sly would fall into, like, nothingness and then just freeze. Mm. And the the warning sign for that is that the sound would go away. Because I still played it even though the sound was gone. So I was thinking, oh, maybe by the time I finish this mission, it will, will come back. And nope, it just means that you're going to crash. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I, I've been going through phases. Because right now, like, I've been... Because I need to get into that Kenny Command groove again. Because I need to uh, get ready for next month's Kenny Command day, and then I gotta do it again for December, alongside Twelve Days of Anime. Which I don't know. I I just wish Kenny Command day only had <laughs> one fucking day out of the year, not just yeah. like random schedules. Because it, it interferes it's like, with stuff. Jeez, Kenny Command! Why you gotta be so selfish for like multiple days throughout the year? Yeah. <laughs> But, um, yeah, what about you? Because yeah. uh, I'm pretty sure you venture in other things, like, you know, your uh, <clears throat> Monster Girl. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, like, pretty much what the question is asking, like, yeah, I do check out some more relaxed series. I actually do watch, uh, you know, some of the more slice of life shows every now and then. Um, I wouldn't say necessarily to take a break from all the manly stuff. It's just that I like venturing into different genres, especially like genres I didn't have that much experience with, which is precisely why I started checking out Slice of Life series. Because um, recently I'm like, yeah, they're just really relaxing and calming the, the watch uh, most of them at times. Uh, because I know a lot of people are like, oh, Slice of Life, it's just it's like cute girls and it's stupid. And I'm like, in a sense, but it does relax you, so I can't really fault it for that. Um, but, yeah, from taking a breather from all the insane mandom, uh, I don't really think that's ever been a problem for me, because like, I check out a wide variety of things, so it's not like I ever really need to take a breather from everything. Since if I get tired of one thing, I'm already watching something else to combat that, so... Yeah. Plus, I've had my recent like tokusatsu obsession, so that's just helped with anime in general. Yeah, because uh, I do want to make some more masculine themed videos like later down the line. Like uh, Takeshi was like the most recent manly thing that I really enjoyed with its first eleven chapters. But uh, oh, yeah. the second thing is that I do want to make that um, top ten manly villains because you know Tiger Mask double finished. So, you, you know, who is going to be on there? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Tiger the Great the Third, but... Uh, I, I don't know. I Kevin. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin. <laughs> oh, God. It's more like top ten tragic anime romances. I guess, <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's true. 
But uh, yeah, I'm trying to think what else is there because uh, I've been brainstorming some ideas for other lists because one of them was like top 10 supervillains you never heard of and I'm trying to divide like um, another one with you know villains that you never heard of just trying to separate all the superhero stuff in one section and I don't want to reuse characters if I don't need to so that's kind of like the bit of a problem. Because uh, I was thinking Manly Villains, Dr. Health. I'm thinking, oh, maybe I should say Dr. Health for the superhero, the super villains ones. Because, you know, that would make more sense. But, but uh, yeah. Yeah, and then, uh, I don't know, let's see how what, what Baki does. Because I, I don't think there's any Yujiro footage in New Grappler unless they want to go all the way to the, you know, Chinese tournament. I mean, it's going to be like 25 episodes. So yeah, well, it's either well, going to well, get there yeah. or it's going to end there. Yeah, and I don't even know if the Netflix thing is that only Japan's Netflix or is that everywhere? Well, it's hard with Netflix because, like, recently that's been a... If you're paying attention to the anime community on Twitter, there's been this whole debate about, you know, streaming services and whatnot. But, like, mm. the thing with Netflix right now is that, you know, they kind of hold off on series, but then at the same time... I think the Baki is going to be a Netflix original, so I think that might change some things. Because like, mm. if it's a Netflix original, I think that's like worldwide. <laughs> then again, I'm not sure. Netflix is kind of confusing. It's like they either do it worldwide or they do it like you know. In yeah, because because at least I know with Don't Make Cry Baby, if you type that in on Netflix, you do see a, like a listing for it, so it should be everywhere. Yeah, so I'm like, I'm still waiting. <laughs> still waiting. I know, Netflix is kind of weird like that, so you know, I, I guess when it comes to that stuff, we'll just have to wait and see how their service provides. Uh, uh, anything else to add? No, no, I think that's about it, the topic. Otherwise, we're going to like, diverge into something else. So. Uh, yeah, let's see. So what, do you th- so what do you prefer, horses or... Uh, what was the other animal? Like, oh, fuck okay. <laughs> it. Uh, anyways, anyways, he, like Leonardo Henriquez, hero. Since you're a big Kaneko Man fan, are you into pro wrestling? If so, who's your favorite wrestler of all time? Sorry for two questions, but no, not really. My family is the one that's into wrestling, but I, I don't really explore it that much. Like whatever I learn, I learn from Kaneko Man or Tiger Mask or from some other. Uh, I don't know. Whenever anime talks about it, then I'll know about it one way or another. It's like I want to get into pro wrestling. I just don't know where to start. And then there's a uh, lucha underground, which I really feel, honestly, as a as a half Mexican, I should be watching. Mm-hmm. It looks really interesting because I know lucha libre is way more hardcore than like normal wrestling. Yeah. And I've seen clips. It looks badass, and they have storylines and all that. So I just need to make time for it. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah. Yeah. So for both of us, Gremlin Fonzi. Who would win a fight to submission, Lupin the Third or Batman? Ooh, submission. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Um, see, that's the thing. I actually remember a long time ago, I, I read this like death battle thing, and they were like fully analyzing both Lupin's and Batman's ability. And to my surprise, they said Lupin, due to his uh, his intelligence and gadgets, which I found pretty surprising. But, you know, any Batman fans aren't going to take that sitting down. But it's honestly hard to say. Yeah, because what I was thinking that um, it also depends how over the top you want Lupin to be. Like in that Go to Babylon movie where he redirects a dynamite with a fucking <laughs> sign. Yeah, because like Lupin, depending on his adaptation, can do really crazy shit like that. Uh, the Dead or Alive movie where he basically shoots a bullet by throwing a knife at it. And, like, the bullet's, like, stuck in the street. He kills a dude with it. Like, really, really extreme methods. Of, yeah, and then, like, like, in Green Jacket, he had that, uh, flammable liquid, so he could have killed anyone with that. Yeah. Plus, see, the... that's the thing. Depending on the Lupin, he has more of a killing intent than, you know, Batman obviously does. Yeah, and then, then also in, um, freaking Pink Jacket, he has tons of fucking gadgets that involve balloons and bubbles. <laughs> when it comes to Batman, it's like the whole, well, he's Batman! <laughs> yeah, then, you know, plans of head and anything. Oh, yeah, and speaking of Batman, like, uh, we get to, Adam West came back from the grave. Oh, yeah, that, that recent movie. I was actually surprised. I'm like, oh, I was like, not yeah. expecting that. 
Yeah, it's like Adam West. Holy shit! <laughs> TV's Adam. Yeah. Yeah, it's like, but people are are getting like, I'm kind of surprised people are now getting annoyed with the whole Batman hype. It's like, oh, well, now what about <laughs> like a couple of years back? <laughs> It was nothing but I mean, Batman. Anything, this is the Batman I want to see more of. Why <laughs> Yeah, yeah, because um, because I don't know why DC's actual channel barely uploaded the trailer for that movie when people have released it earlier. So I don't, I don't know what the hell's wrong with them, but you know, I saw a bunch of other channels release trailers before DC uh, ended. Like, yeah. was it leaked or something? Or I don't know, know, but yeah, Adam West is gonna fight Two Face, which I don't think that's ever happened in the actual series. So that's yeah, that's why I heard it never happened. Yeah, all. Two Face never appeared there, so I was like, oh, that's interesting. Having like the more. Two Face is uh, William Shatner here. Or... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I remember they did mention Two Face like when Return of the Kid Crusaders came out. They did show like a Two Face illustration. So I was guessing. I, I guess it all worked out in the end somehow. But it, it is kind yeah, of creepy. But at the same time, I can't help but find it a little bit dickish. Is that people are making off making money off of, you know, someone that just died. I mean, I'm not sure. I mean, maybe when the DV comes out, they might have like a little tribute to him, like Wait, either in the beginning or the credits, because um, you know that would be tasteful. But you know, it's probably something he recorded before he died. Yeah. Because I remember when Michael Jackson died, didn't they release an album that he was supposed to make before he died? Yeah, yeah, they released like a bunch of stuff. Like to me, I always find it a little like, like assholeish how quickly these things come out and they seem to make more money when they're dead than they're actually alive. Well, because now that they're dead, more people know about them. They get all the, you know, they're kind of grieving, so more people are buying stuff. Mm. Which, I honestly, I don't, like, it's kind of like a moral issue. It's like, does the company know that? That they're going to make extra money because this person just died? Or are they just doing it as a tribute to this artist mm. or actor? Because, you know, obviously they'd want their work to be seen. They won't want to just be hidden away. Yeah. Um, because they died. Mm. So it's just like, it's a, it's kind of a gray area, but uh, I'm pretty sure the people that died wouldn't really mind that much. And who knows, maybe some of that money goes to their family or whatnot, so there's mm. always that. Nick Siroki, Hero, do you think that the new Devilman anime being 10 episodes might hurt it, or will it get another season? 10 episodes is enough. That's the... I, I know we talked about it in the one of the other podcasts. The podcast. One of them. I don't know which one, but you know, the point yeah, is, yeah, we we talked about that. You know, ten episodes is good enough. Like that, that's enough. It, it should, should be fine. If it gets another season, then I'm, I'm hoping it tackles any of the other uh, Devilman parts because you know Devilman. Devilman, Devilman you get, yeah. <laughs> six fans. Maybe or, you might get like a versus Hades anime. For all we know. Oh, uh, that or Devilman Saga. It's like oh shit, uh, <laughs> the whole package. Maybe like. Maybe we might go so far, we just it turns into Violence Jack. <laughs> Maybe that's how fucking far we'll go. Wow, I go mean, full I circle. I thought it would be pretty cool, like if each of these uh, different parts of Devilman would be taken to different studios. I think that would be pretty cool. Yeah. Well, I mean, Devilman's different. Like the art style and almost everything is different. Already. Yeah, so. for that exact reason. Like you know, maybe the next time we get like Bones or Trigger or someone else to Madhouse. work on. <laughs> Madhouse. Watch Madhouse do the <laughs> make it look exactly like the manga. <laughs> uh, something like that. Well, I, don't I mean, know. I'm hoping to get uh, Yashihiro Imagawa to do something because he really. I mean, I I do like uh, Masaki, but I honestly think uh, Yashihiro would probably do the manga justice considering what he did with uh, Shin Mazinger Z. I mean, when it yeah. comes to bringing something old and bring it to a new generation, <laughs> he's like the best guy to go to. Honestly, Devil Man should be fine. Gotta have faith. <laughs> yeah, and Trent's board corner actually had uh, four questions, but we'll try to narrow this down into one. So, Delman's becoming more cool. Are you worried it might become overrated? Do you feel like a hipster not liking so many popular things? You gotta tip some more up on popular things. Uh, well, they all kind of correlate into one question, I guess. But, uh, yeah. Devil Man, I don't know. We'll wait and see what happens because, uh, you know, JoJo, that really that blew up. It blew up to the point of annoy to my annoyance, so honestly, because a lot of people just got over. It just got ridiculous because of. Uh... Yeah, I know. Oh yeah, see, like I'm not even sure if like most of these supposed JoJo fans are actual fans. It's like you know, you got all these people that are really in for it for the memes or the power scaling or maybe a certain character. But I'm like, are these people really fans? Like, hmm. always question that. Yeah, back in my day, JoJo fans were very different. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I 
saw a guy on the JoJo train before, like, it really took off. Like, I remember I, I just finished Phantom Blood. And it's like, oh, hey, there's an anime coming out. And I'm like, oh, okay. Uh, well, that's, that's convenient for me. Yeah. Oh. So, to, narrow, to sum this all down... Is that, um, well, how do I feel about older shows in general? Because, like, with JoJo, I feel people should be exploring the more older anime around its time period, you know, like Otokojuku, Fist of North Star, whatever, whatever the, the other jump titles around that time. But me personally, um, this is also, I can summarize Lupin. I feel like finding, um, exploring an older show is like finding a treasure chest. Whether it's full of gold or not is up to whether you enjoy it. Because, like, in case of Lupin, I found, like, a lot of gold in that one. <laughs> because a lot of these old shows, that they have, like, a bunch of extra material throughout all the years. Whether it's a modern retelling or just um, a bunch of material, especially with Lupin's case, then you found the gold mine. So, that's basically the best way to put it. Because with Fist of North Star, there's a bunch of manga that I still haven't really bothered reading. And Otoko Juku is, like, so long. Kaneko Man is still ongoing today. But that's, like, another treasure there. So that's just the best way to yes. put it, really. It's the benefit of uh, exploring. When it comes to the whole, do you gravitate more to unpopular things? I mean, in a sense, I kind of do, but that's mainly due to the channel, uh, the nature of my channel. Because, like, my channel thrives on, like, finding underrated things. So it's like, if I stop reading or watching underrated things, I don't really have much to talk about. Yeah. So, uh, in my case, yeah, I kind of yeah. have to. Another reason that I have is that if I don't, if no one's talking about it, then I could easily form my own opinion without like any sort of a uh, hype reputation or criticism beforehand. So I just go into it blind, not knowing what to expect. And if I like what I <laughs> didn't expect, then I'm like, oh, I want to share this with people because I feel this thing should be one of those talk about things. But, you know, that never really happens that way. And, and like, it's easier talking about things like from your own opinions, because, like, when you talk about something popular, uh, generally there's, like, this consensus about it, and, like, everyone starts forming, like, this, like, everyone basically starts saying the same thing about it, and, like, I, I kind of noticed that when I did my uh, One Punch Man anime review way back in, uh, like, I think <coughs> two years ago on Macho March, uh, it's like most of what I said there, so many other people already said. So it's just kind of like, you know, in the end, it's like, what's the point? A thousand other people already did what you did. Yeah, so, yeah, like, when you talk about something underrated, you're more unique. You know, you're not, you're not saying the same exact thing like 12 other people just did. Yeah, because in, in the case of One Punch Man, there was a bunch of One Punch Man trivia going around, and pretty much everyone already knew all the information all the little Easter eggs and stuff. So it's like, because um, it happened years before with with reviews like Bakano and Death Note. Everybody, there's a bunch of those all over YouTube. So it's like, what's the point of even really talk? You know, just being up a dead horse. So uh, I don't want to make it sound like an elitist thing when it comes to like, oh yeah, I only like older shows. But it, it's more easier to show that you're a fan of it if there's the if the fan base is a little low and then if you've done your own investigation, your own research. Because um, cause now, it just feels like anything that's popular, it'll be super exploited right off the bat. And then, uh, well, like you already said, Falcon, a lot of the, a lot of people have like the same opinions. Like uh, when people say, like, oh yeah, Hunter Hunter is a really good anime, but I'm thinking, me myself, like I lost interest in that because I feel like it doesn't really, it doesn't really move anywhere. Because <laughs> yeah, especially yeah. now, <laughs> I hate it. It's just not moving at all. Yeah. <laughs> So I don't know, there's, there's uh, stuff like that which always kind of raises eyebrows. Like uh, like recently with One Piece, I kind of caught up to the anime and I need to read like 30-some chapters of manga. But even now, I, I feel... I already have like... People were saying that the Zo art was like so good and then I feel it really wasn't to me. I mean, I don't think the Zo art was that good, but just compared to the previous arcs, it was yeah. more of a fresh, fresh air. For me, it was just a symbol that like One Piece wasn't going to fall into that what I call part two disease for too long, like it was kind of on the stage of recovery, uh, at least in my eyes, because like, uh, ever since New World started, I was really worrying for One Piece, it was kind of dropping uh, low on my radar of, uh, you know, favorite things, which is a shame, because like, you know, One Piece is what really you know, drove me to get into anime and manga, like, for the longest time, it was my number one series, like, back in the day, before I started YouTube, <laughs> One Piece was my shit, mm -hmm. I was One Piece fanboy, so, uh, yeah, but like, 
nowadays, it, it, you know, it's reaching more on top of uh, you know, it's still maintaining being on my favorites list. Uh, I do like the new arc, and I'm more excited for things to come. But uh, yeah, but yeah, I can see where you're coming from. Yeah, I, I even forgot what I was, what was I gonna mention about that. <laughs> Oh, okay. Yeah, I was gonna say something, but I'm like, what was I gonna bring up? <laughs> There's something about One Piece that bothered me recently, but uh. Well, I remember a while back you were telling me it just feels like Toei is kind of reaching their hands into it, the whole. Uh... Yeah, 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 the like the whole Nami being more magical girlish and the way the whole uh pastry gimmick, you know, Candyland yeah. slash, um, what was the other one? Candyland, Alice in Wonderland ish type of kid-friendly stuff, especially with the, you know, anthropomorphic animals kind of and the, the toys and dress rosa. Oh, yeah, now I remember what I was going to bring up. I wasn't really thinking about until you mentioned Yeah, I, I just feel like true. it's softening One Piece and then... Because even the main villain, right, the one, in at least in the anime, was fighting against uh, Cracker and his whole thing is like, I can make biscuits in the form of armies. And I'm thinking... Yeah... <laughs> It's to me it's just like silly because I know One Piece is a silly thing like especially in its early beginnings but it's like Luffy's toughest enemy is not a fucking <laughs> warlord it's not a fucking empress but right now it's a fucking crack it's a fucking biscuit. <laughs> it's like, I mean, really? Yeah, I mean to that extent, yeah, but like I don't know. To me, it at least merges well with One Piece because One Piece has always had like really ridiculous shit, so yeah. it's like. It, it feels out of place, but at the same time, not really, because it's one piece, and literally, like, anything could fucking happen at any moment. Yeah, because, uh... Um, cause, just like how milk yeah. is capable of, like, healing all wounds. Mm. Uh, not just Brooke, but just, like, anyone in general. Like, Luffy grew back a fucking tooth. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was gonna bring up some... Uh, yeah, because I think the reason why a lot of people praise Zoar is because it was just a breath of fresh air after... <laughs> You know, like, oh yeah, finally we're done with Dress Rosa, let's move on to something new, and then... Because, it kind of went back uh, to what One Piece was, it had that adventure, you're traveling to a new, you know, you yeah, see Yeah, but, I don't know, I just have a bunch of criticisms for, like, the second half of, of New World for One Piece, because currently, you ever since uh, Dress Rosa, the, the group hasn't been together anymore. Yeah, that that's been my problem, because, like, before uh, New World, I think Oda did a good job in giving every character their, their own spotlight. Mm-hmm. And it's not like the crew got bigger after New World. They're still the same number, but like they keep dividing. Like, I think because of the story. <laughs> yeah, they keep on dividing, and like I don't feel like because like in the past they always did divide, but they always had points where they had like a rendezvous or something like that. But like I think because of the story and the huge cast, it's really hard to balance all that. And like I still feel Oda does give time to everyone. It's just not to the extent that most people would like. Like, for example, Brooke recently has been getting a little bit more spotlight, but what about Frankie? Mm-hmm. He's you know? not even on screen. <laughs> I don't really know where the fuck Frankie is. Like, yeah, because I mean... Month, I haven't seen Frankie in the longest time. Yeah, because the other thing that was annoying me is that, you know, Zoro, I don't think he's really... <laughs> with the exception of the whole Pika fight, he hasn't really done any... And the, um... H- Hardy Jones, he hasn't done anything important <laughs> at all. Yeah, that's true. It was almost just like he's more or less sitting there. I've heard rumors that supposedly 2018 is going to be like the year of Zoro because they're going eventually yeah, going the to Wano. that samurai country. Yeah, Wano. Uh, which you know that that would be cool. Um, but at the same time, like I appreciate these years of insert character, but like couldn't we just have a year of you know the Straw Hats? Yeah, you year know, of like, the Straw Hats. Put them all together. It's like Oda, you did it before. Like I don't, I'm, I'm not sure what's. I, I don't know. It's I'm hoping he'll sort things out because like at least the thing with Oda though is like he at least plans shit. So mm. like it's yeah because I feel Toys also to blame because they don't give since you know when the New World started that's when the anime should have stopped like that Oda could have have a little more relaxation because now he's like more of a, on a on a noose because he have he has to make all these chapters quickly because the anime needs to animate this shit. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know why One Piece couldn't do what Naruto did, take a break for a bit, and then do like a whole Shippuden kind of thing, or, you know, and they, they could have gotten like a new title for One Piece, it could have been One Piece New World, like, you know, it would have been a nice divide in seasons, and mm. I don't know why they could have just done that. Anyways, so getting like back to the Q&A. Dragon Ball did that, at least for you. 
yeah, yeah. Let's get back to the Q and A. We're already drifting away. Like we're drifting away. Yeah. Like the One Piece yeah. plot right now. So it's like, yeah, well, yeah. Like, uh, okay. yeah. Today ends, so tomorrow can start. Question for both of y'all: What is your anime? What's a mistake moment? Interpret that however you want. Hmm. Oh. I actually read this question a while back, and I was, like, thinking about that. I'm like, what exactly does this mean? Like, anime was a mistake moment. Yeah, yeah, like, what was your moment where, it felt, where you felt that? What was your Miyazaki moment? <laughs> the moment where I just took a step back and, like, you know what? Anime was a mistake. Yeah. Um, hmm. I don't know. I can't think of one where... I, 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 that was the top of my head right now, of one particular moment that I just absolutely hated. More than anything. I mean, I guess it's like when I discovered like those popular series that are mainly focused, like those harems that revolve about around like a dude who wants to stick his dick in his little sister. Mm. Um, when I discovered those, especially like last season, you had Aramon the Sensei, which was like the talk of the town, uh, despite supposedly being shit. I can't really comment on it because I haven't watched it, but at the same time. That whole storyline kind of disgusts me, so I don't really plan on checking it out anytime soon. Mm -hmm. But like the whole incest thing, I'm like, oh, okay, that's that's a, it's kind of pushing it a bit. I mean, like, sure, I, I would probably stick my dick in a crazy monster lady, but you know, my <laughs> own family, my own family, like, no, that's a no no. Yeah, let's just keep it, you know, let's just keep it all with our <laughs> with our horse girls. <laughs> Sister, yeah, centaur like, girls. There you go. That's the word I was looking for. <laughs> yeah, centaur girls. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know. So it's probably my anime's mistake moment. Those kind of things. Uh, I can't think of anything. I don't know why. Is the only one that comes to mind right now is like it's just the way I've been feeling with Blue Jacket, just with the whole. Um, but that's not big enough to say like, oh yeah, all of anime sucks. But that's, yeah, yeah, that, that's yeah, just that's more like, like a. Blue Pond was a mistake. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so I'm like, I don't know, that, that's just me with Blue Jacket, because I don't really like Blue all that much, and it shows. <laughs> but it's uh, just an I mean, opinion. Oh my gosh. But, yeah, I can't think of anything. So, Blaze V, this one's for me. Are you going to watch Master Keaton? Because you really should. Maybe someday, because I, I don't know, when Urusawa, like, I kind of fell off of that ever since I cut up to Billy Bat, and that was when Billy Bat wasn't finished. And I haven't gone back to it, <laughs> so I don't know. Yeah, Urusawa had his brief phase in the anime community because I know there was a time where everyone was talking about him and his, his series, and then it kind of like because he doesn't have much. Stopped. Well, it'll come uh, back, I guess, because of of uh, Pluto. Oh right, yeah. Yeah. That that I'm excited for. I probably would have took that over Adam. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, so that's right. There's two Astro Boys to look forward to, Pluto and Astro Boy Reboot, which I hope does come out. But anyways, we're we're moving on to this is a question for you for Chiaki Momoi. What is your Oh yeah, actually I didn't see the oh, fuck, where did the question go? <laughs> I lost the question. Come on, get back up. Yeah, anyway. no, I, I see it. your favorite go to guy Mecca. Yeah. Um I mean that one like I feel like it's kind of obvious, um, but it's probably like Mazinger Z, because like it, it, it's it's just class. Can't really beat the classic. I have a fucking Mazinger Z coffee mug uh, that I got at a convention. Um, I just really like Mazinger Z. Again, it's it's fucking classic. I like moves. Like the names sound awesome. That we just uh, I like a lot of the manga series. Well. You know, the stuff that's actually by the guy, <laughs> which, uh, kind of sad to say, but, you know, Shin Mazinger Zero is, like, fucking awesome. Um, so, yeah, Mazinger Z. Because, like, I know it did get upgrades over time, but, like, still, the original to me is, like, the best. Because, you know, Great Mazinger just didn't really quite live up to the hype it got, at least when compared to when it first showed up in that General uh, Darkness movie. Yeah. But, yeah... All right, favorite and least version of Devil Man. It was probably Devil Man Strange Days, which is the one I liked the least because it really felt like it wasn't until I read it the second time thinking, "What does this have to do with anything?" <laughs> it's just like a random side story that took place during the whole, you know, Armageddon stuff. 
Oh, wait, was that the one that followed those, like, rockers? That yeah, yeah, it was about that band. I was just like... Yeah, I finished that last <laughs> month, and I'm just kind of like, okay, the, the visuals are cool. Yeah, like, like Dome Man what? Lady there was, you know, that was cool, but... Because it just felt so weird because at the beginning you see Devil Man and 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 Satan going off and then they just cut off to like, hey, we're gonna follow the story of these two other guys. <laughs> it's kind of like a, a whiplash. You're like, what the fuck just happened? Yeah. I'm like, why? I don't know. It, it's it just feels like a bit of a self insert type of story. Where like, oh yeah, it turns out there's this one guy that I cannot put his trust in, and Ryu is this guy's like the best guy Ryu's army, and it's sort of like a repetition of the story, but it's not what the characters that you're accustomed to. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. It was, it was just it was weird. Yeah, it okay, was so strange. well, favorite version. Well, we'll see how Delman Crybaby comes out because <laughs> that is because uh, currently I, I just really like the um, you know the cyborg Delman design. It, it just looks so fucking good. <laughs> but uh, uh, but aside yeah. from that, I'm trying to think. Is there another? I kind of want to say the Delman OVAs, but at the same time, I'm not so sure. Well, it's saying version. The question is asking for version. Is it like talking about specific design or just series as a whole? I don't know. I guess it could be anything, whether it could be a character, or series, design, because or because in terms of series, I'm guessing. Yeah, I could think of ones that I didn't really like so much because um, I find Delman Saga intriguing, but you know, there's not much of it available. <laughs> All we know is my brain right. is confused. <laughs> no, yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. <laughs> it, 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 we'll figure that out later. So from Baki Hanma, even yeah. though he has a picture of uh, <laughs> of Black General. <laughs> if, yeah, questions about Black General. Yeah, yeah, because lately he's been like getting really into that show. Well, manga. So I can't really say show because there's only been a few episodes leaked on YouTube. But anyways, uh, Black General. If Black General ended any time, what would your ideal ending be? That's actually something I'm I'm trying to think about right now. Cause um, I guess the only way is if somehow like Brave Man just caves in to Black General. I'm not sure whether he becomes a villain or she becomes a good guy. <laughs> I mean, that'd be interesting. Or maybe like somehow like the funny. You know, dressed up as heroes and villains, they like their normal everyday selves meet up, start dating, and possibly get married. But they, because they're both kind of stupid, they never realize that <laughs> they're alter egos of who they actually are. Mm. Um, something like that. I guess that's possible because uh, they did meet each other once out of costume, but they didn't recognize each other at all. <laughs> So maybe it's just like, oh, honey, I have to go to the be- restroom real quick. I'll see you in a few minutes. It's like, oh, no problem. I, I have some business to take care of myself, too. Yeah, and then and like, like they meet up outside and all, like, dress up. Yeah, so well, this is like Mr. and Mrs. Smith, <laughs> the superhero version. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe something like that. Yeah. All right. Another one for me from Merlin the Mighty. Let's see. Hero, I noticed you've been posting Sly Cooper stuff lately. I know you're into. I know you're also into Sonic. What are some of your other favorite video game franchises and why? Uh, let me think about this. Uh, let's see. I only recently got into Sly Cooper, as you might have heard earlier in this podcast or a few podcasts ago. And Sonic the Hedgehog is another thing that I like. But uh, in terms of games, uh, the only one, uh, other one I could think of would probably be Mario. But I only really played uh, three Mario games, which is actually no four. No, five, because I played Yoshi's Island, uh, Super Mario World 2, I think, because I know it's retitled something else on the Game Boy Advance. But, um, the main ones I played the most out of was Super Mario 64 and Super Mario Sunshine. I never played a Galaxy. Oh, uh, but you have a Wii, though, right? Yeah, yeah, because, uh, the only other game I could think of was Luigi's Mansion, but that's a completely different gameplay style. <laughs> yeah, I always wish I played that, because I remember having the GameCube, but, like, I never really got around to playing it. Yeah. And I kind of regret that. It looks like a big game. Yeah, Luigi's Mansion. It's like it's kind of it's kind of easy actually. So. Oh okay. Yeah. Because I know they made like a sequel to the 3DS. I should probably get that one since I do have the 3DS. Yeah, I, I don't know. I never really played any handheld games, with exception of the Game Boy and Game Boy Advance. It was mostly just Pokemon for me, like those uh, days. But um, yeah. other game franchises. 
Mm, I, I don't know. There's some stuff that kind of got me intrigued, mostly from its soundtrack, like um, the music for like Red Steel, uh, Red Steel Two specifically. Um, what was the name of that Sega game? Anarchy Reigns. That's one. Oh, I, I actually yeah. have that game. Yeah, there's some games that caught my interest where it's more anime anime aesthetic, something like stuff like Mad World, uh, Lollipop Chainsaw, or No More Heroes, stuff like that. But I never actually played them for myself, so I don't know. Yeah, same here. Well, see, like I have interest in them, I just really can't find a way to buy them or <laughs> get them. So mm. it's never really got around. I don't, to I don't know. Them. I just wish there was more like. More stuff that actually had a game that I can play, and then like an anime to go with it, <laughs> usually. But yeah, that would be ideal. Or something. I don't know. I always wish there was a little more to it, but that's just me. But um, why do I like them? Uh, for Sonic, I just well, I guess this also goes to the realm of Smash Brothers because whenever I played Smash, I always liked characters that had a lot of mobility, and Sonic. Um, it's it sounds like a very stupid, simple answer. Just like you know, Sonic's fast. <laughs> That's kind of the reason why I just like the adrenaline for like the Sonic games, but I still need to go back and finish the, uh, you know, play the uh, Sonic, you know, the original NES, I mean NES, <laughs> the Dreamcast titles, not Dreamcast, Genesis, uh, no, so whatever. Sonic on the NES. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, wait a minute, <laughs> Genesis titles, gosh. You know, Sonic 1, 2, 3, Sonic and Knuckles, Sonic CD. Oh, oh Sonic just came out yeah, I, I like I don't know. I'm not that excited for Mania. I was more excited for Forces, but that's just that, that's just me sticking to like, man. Why do I like more 3D Sonic rather than you know 2D Sonic? I should like both, but I just like more the 3D stuff because uh, you're not a true fan. You know? <laughs> yeah, because uh, with Slay Cooper, it's mostly just the whole thief aesthetic, and uh, you know, I was thinking like it kind of makes me think of Lupin a bit, but you know, Slay Cooper is way different enough. To be it's obviously its own thing, so I still don't know which of the four games I like because I really love playing all, all of them. But yeah, they, they're like they're all the same franchise, but they each kind of have like a distinctive feeling towards them. Yeah, yeah, because um, I was it's really annoyed because um, because I was getting like I actually replayed, started replaying the game again, just out of because <laughs> I just felt like I needed more, so I so I started playing Sly Three again. This time, like all in one go, because of um. The other time I would play Sly 3, then jump with 4 and 2, and you know, just keep going back and forth. So, this time I went, I'm playing 3 all the way, and I'm a little bit upset because I already reached the pirate stuff pretty quickly. And then I realized that I already bought all the items that I really needed, and there's really no incentive for me to start stealing anymore. So, that, that kind of got me like bummed out. <laughs> it's like, aww, oh. there's no point in stealing anymore. <laughs> I already got what I needed because, um, they give you this upgrade. Where Sly could like turn invisible, but if you get the second level, then you can actually attack, run, and steal things while still being invisible. So it's like a really cool thing, but you get it so fucking late in the game where you barely could even use it. So it's like, why didn't you give me this earlier? So I don't know. I'm kind of hoping that a Sly Five ever happens, especially with the Egypt thing, since the um, the Pharaoh uh, um, ancestors, the one that came up with these shadow powers. I'm really hoping they make a gameplay where you could actually have fun a bit for being invisible. And doing shit. <laughs> but, um... Yeah, for Sonic, it's mostly just speed, really. Because cause I, I really don't understand, like, the, the character of Sonic, per se, as much as, like, other people do. Yet, what's, like, Cooper was more easier for me to swallow and understand. I guess because since there was only four games and, you know, the story mode was a more... A little more elaborate, especially with the more communication between the characters. With Sonic, I, never, I haven't really figured out, like, what makes him exactly tick. I have seen like where where it doesn't work like with the uh, the way he's been portrayed in Sonic Colors and Sonic Boom, you know those type of stuff. Seeing how he got more kid friendly and like less um, heroic per se. So that's one thing I've been trying to figure out because uh, I think one of the reason why I kind of appeal to both Sonic and um, and Sly Cooper it's because like i've been watching some videos and it just got me intrigued but at the same time i, I can't help but find like comparisons between them with lupon with sonic's the uh, diversity and that's how lupon is all that diverse shit and then all of the different uh locations and with like cooper it's just you know obviously the whole thief background which i found interesting with the whole lineage so with sonic i'm not really sure what i like about him actually since the speed is like an easy thing because um 
Because I, I do like the idea of like moving really fast and having you know this action theme type of game. Because the first game I ever played was um well I played Sonic Adventure one in a pawn shop just because it was there you know just for whoever is there I guess they wanted to try it out. And then the first game I really played all the way through was Sonic Adventure two when I rented that from Hollywood Video. Oh, wow. Those yeah. days. Yeah, those days. I was like, holy shit, a game rental for the GameCube. <laughs> and then I started getting into Sonic for a while. Like, Because to me, it's like a really bad thing to say that in that muth of mine, I was able to 100%, not Sonic Adventure 2, not Sonic Adventure 1, but I 100%ed everything Shadow the Hedgehog and Sonic Heroes. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so I was God. like, hmm. <laughs> I don't think those were the ones I should have spent that much time on, but... I still like the idea of Sonic Colors of using um, several characters at once, but I admit playing playing it again recently, is I find it a little more fucking up a little more than usual. And then with Shadow the Hedgehog, that's something I want to do like all the way through. Like if I were to let's play anything, that's the one game I want to do because of just of its um, reputation and see like if I could do it again. Like can I really hundred percent this game? <laughs> like how did I do this back then? <laughs> That I even Honestly, like, you know, the way you've gone through the Sonic games, I'm surprised you haven't done, like, the Let's Play channel. Yeah, already. because, yeah, because, the um, I don't know, I need to get a capture card, and then I don't even know when it comes to, like, frames and rendering and then uploading yeah, that shit. Because, like, if anything, I want to do that with Sly Cooper, and but I also, because I, I want to say there's some things that I kind of discovered that no one really explores about the game or, you know, some mechanics. Because it turns out in Sly 3, you have this, um... Uh, kick attack that can actually uh, take out enemies in one hit. Well, most of them. Oh. So there's stuff like that, and then uh, collecting the the bottles and all that. Because there's also some stuff that I'm kind of intrigued that I don't know how to do. So I'm kind of hoping maybe by doing that, someone else could like you know talk to me in the comments, figure out how to do this. Like in slide two, when you're doing that mission with the bug with the water. Because oh. I'm actually wondering what is the right way to do that mission. Because whenever I do it, I kind of like fuck it up and just like uh, <laughs> gather attention of thugs and I need to like take them out as I on the go because I'm there's got to be a way in order to like um, do a complete stealth with that but I'm not sure how to do it but yeah so anyways um, let me give the question to you Falcon because I'm gonna like take a little bathroom break so the next one is All from right. Merlin that is um well I'll let you read that one <laughs> it's a Godzilla okay, thing so. be back yeah, what is your favorite Godzilla movie slash monster uh, going into Godzilla movies, I actually do plan on uh, re-watching all the Godzilla movies, because as a kid, I was really into Godzilla. I probably told the story a couple times on here, but as a kid, I really wanted to be Godzilla as an actual career, um, which, you know, is not possible. Um, but, like, when I was a kid, I used to rent all, like, the Godzilla movies and just watch them. But the thing is, like, since I was a kid, it had a really small attention span, and I was only in it for... Godzilla, I mean, kind of, like, sped up some things, just, like, just... I can't really comment on favorite movie yet, because, you know, most of the time I skipped around anyway, so I didn't really get to experience a full movie, but the one I probably have the most memories with is probably, um, the Godzilla versus the Smog Monster. That's the one I have the most memories of. I wouldn't really say it's my favorite. It's just I remember that one the most because of like how weird it was and the whole the whole smog monster concept was just like really out there. And of course, you know that one had some really over the top moments like when Godzilla flying and shit. Um, favorite monster? I mean, I'm not sure if it's cheating in this question, but Godzilla is probably just one of my favorite monsters in general. I mean. King of Monsters. You know, that's that's some good stuff right there. But if I was to think of another monster from Godzilla, I like. Um, Destroya is pretty badass. I mean, the name is badass. It's fuck. And, like, it doesn't even look like a space monster. It just looks like a straight-up demon. Like, it's fucking beastly looking. Um, so, yeah, there's Destroya. I think... Uh, Gigan was pretty cool. Like, I really like the whole chainsaw belly thing and like weird arm sword kind of things. And I actually do remember that movie. That movie was also pretty strange because that's the one where Godzilla and Anguirus kind of talk to each other. And it was like also weirdly gory for a Godzilla movie because like I think Gigan like 
cut Godzilla's head and like blood was spewing everywhere. That was uh, it's pretty crazy. But uh, yeah, that's that's probably it for Godzilla for me. Uh, I'm back. All right, good. So I was going to get worried about. Okay, what if I finish this question before he comes back? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just going to be awkward silence. Mm -hmm. All right, from oh we got a uh, <laughs> oh, shit. I'm forgetting the main character's name, like uh, Yoroi Takeshi, <laughs> like in the comments. <laughs> oh. Yeah, like which Tatsunoko heroes '90s reboot OVAs do you like, or are you gonna review all of them? Well, I kind of answered that earlier, but yeah, uh, I'm gonna talk about all of them at one point. But um, I guess my favorite one is actually the Kashan. Because since they were able to condense the story into four episodes and then they elaborated more on the uh, on making a breaking boss a bit more ambiguously evil rather than you know just straight up villain. Yeah. So I don't know. It's still menacing. It's still pretty personal, but I just like the just seeing a few episodes, like a couple episodes of the original, and then seeing the like holy shit the update, the '90s update. It's like yeah, this is what it should be. <laughs> it's not Cash and Sins. It's Kashan. <laughs> but um. Uh... Yeah, and uh, there was another question which is about reaction videos or, I don't, I don't know, it depends if we find anything, because I mean, the other time we did something was with the Devilman Saga. Yeah, I mean, I think stuff like that is fine, or like that one time we were reading, I mean, we didn't record it, but like most of the time when we watch movies together, or like... Oh yeah, we record, all, record them all the time, but we never edit them. <laughs> or it's, it's like... It wouldn't be that hard editing. It's the thing is, like, when we watch these movies, it, Skype somehow fucks up, and yeah. then, like, it, it ruins the experience, because then, like, it cuts off right in the middle of something good. So then it's, like, it'll be split in multiple parts, and it'll be really confusing to edit. Yeah. Anyways, speaking of reactions, this next question is definitely one <laughs> to give that. Oh. Dark oh. Fatal Night, for both of you, if you guys were gay, which anime man would you bang? <laughs> <laughs> 